Hikaru Nakamura uses his tactical brilliance again. Welcome back to Chess Dog. Believe me, you're going to want to watch every single phase of this game, the opening, the middle, and end game, to see how Hikaru Nakamura weaves his web and delivers his great tactical play. His opponent is Jeffrey Zhang. This is the St. Louis Rapid, played in 2022. 25 minutes for each side with a 10-second increment. Jeffrey Zhang has white. Hikaru Nakamura has black. Let us jump right in. D4, knight f6, c4, g6. And very quickly, we get on the board a king's Indian defense. One of the most aggressive openings black can play. He's playing for a win, and he's playing for tactics. Castles and bishop to e3. This is a little bit unorthodox to develop this bishop before the knight at g1. The idea is you're keeping g4 under control with the queen and the bishop, and oftentimes white will expand on the king's side with the h and the g pawns. Hikaru plays e5, getting his own stake in the center. Now d5, knight to a6, and here Jeffrey Zhang decide, decides to just play knight to f3, and we get basically a Petrosian opening with this knight played to a6. Now knight to g4, harassing the bishop at e3, and preparing the classic tactical attacking move from Nakamura, f5, opening up the king's side. Bishop to g5, the bishop is rerouting, can go to h4, and later after f3, even come back to f2. f6 hits the bishop, bishop to h4, and now h5. A possible threat is g5, trapping this bishop. It doesn't work yet, because white can always respond with h3, hitting the knight and giving the bishop a way to, a place to hide, but you got to be a little careful if you're white after a move like uh, that. Knight to d2 was played. Uh, after h3, white's fine. Knight to d2, opening up the queen and bishop at the knight on g4, and this knight can be rerouted. Knight to h6, and now g5 is a real threat. g5, bishop g3, h4, winning the bishop is on the board. So Jeffrey Zhang plays f3. Now the bishop can tuck away at the f2 square. Knight to f7, and... Black can attack on the king side, play f5, play g5, a3. White begins his standard strategy in this Mardel Plata structure. Play b4, control the c5 square. He'd love to keep this knight out of the c5 square and stuck at a6 on the side of the board. So Nakamura follows a, a classic piece of advice. Improve your worst placed piece. And his bishop on g7 is quite poorly placed. So he plays bishop to h6. Now the bishop can enter into the fray and is on a very active diagonal. Queen to c2, and here uh, Nakamura plays c5. A bishop to e3, just putting the bishop right into the heart of white's position was also a decent try. But c5 was played, and white doesn't get anything from taking on Passan after bc6. Black has d5 under control, can play d5 himself. So instead, Jeffrey Zhang just goes ahead and gets that bishop back to f2. He wants to play Play, excuse me, play b4 and put as much pressure on c5 as possible. Knight to c7, a novelty in the past, bishop to d7, but both ideas are the same. Black wants to support a b5 pawn push, uh, or also this knight, this knight can be rerouted later. Bishop to d3, again, black's counterplay will often come with f5, so Jeffrey Zhang wants to keep f5 under control. He's got his queen, bishop, and pawn. Attacking that square, bishop to d7, again playing for b5, b4, and here Nakamura plays b6. So what he's decided to do on the queen side is sort of batten down the hatches and keep white from gaining too much activity so he can move his pieces over to the king's side and attack on, over there. Rook, a, rook to b1, and here Nakamura plays f5, and uh, it looks like he can't get away with it, but it turns out he, he can make it work. After pawn takes c5, First, he takes on a c5 with the d-pawn. Now, that gives white a protected passer, but he can play knight e8, knight d6, and blockade that passed pawn. Ef5, gf5, and it looks like white can just take the pawn on f5 and win it. But that would be a blunder, because after bishop takes f5, black has this move bishop to d2 with check. The queen can't take, because he would just lose the bishop at f5, so he would have to take with the king, but then this move, queen to g5, check. Attacking the king and attacking the bishop at f5 a second time, and Nakamura would just win a piece. So the f5 pawn is indirectly defended. White castles, and now queen to f6, so that pawn is now permanently defended. 
rook b to e1, attacking the center, e5 in particular, and now knight to e8. So black can play this idea of knight to d6, but it turns out Nakamura has much more ambitious plans with that knight. a4, white wants to play a5 and create a target on b6, king to h8, so the rook can move over and attack down the g-file, rook to e2, and now rook to g8, as we were just discussing. a5, going in and creating that weakness on b6. h4, Nakamura plays on the other side of the board. We'd like to play h3 and weaken the king. Rook to b1 to attack b6. Now knight to g7. So he's not going to blockade on d6. He wants to play the knight to h5, then maybe f4, and really get a lot of activity. Pawn takes, pawn takes. Now he can't take the pawn at b6 yet because the queen at f6 defends, but now he plays the move d6. And for the moment, that interferes with the defense of b6, but the main reason is to play the knight into d5, where it would hit the queen and cause all kinds of trouble in black's position. And here Nakamura plays bishop to e6 to keep that square under control. It turns out he had a better move here, and that's the move knight to e6, with the threat of coming into d4. So let's say uh, bishop takes f5, then knight to d4. It's the bishop, the queen, and the rook. And if bishop takes knight, which really would be forced, he would have this move, queen to f5. And after queens come off the board, he has a double attack on the rook at b1, the bishop at d4, if bishop to e5 check, just knight takes, and bishop takes d2, and uh, black's posi white's position is collapsing, and he'd be down a whole a minor piece in that case. But bishop to e6 was Nakamura's choice. Rook takes b6, knight to h5, coming into f4, which will attack g2 as well as the knight on e2, knight to b3, and now knight to f4 attacks g2 and the rook. So before Jeffrey Jean got in this position, he knew he was going to have to give up that rook, make an exchange sack, but he takes on c5, and that way the pawn at g2 is defended. But Nakamura goes ahead and takes his material. Knight takes rook, queen takes e2, now rook a to b8. To challenge that annoying and powerful rook on b6, rook takes b8, rook takes b8. And here, knight to b5 was played. He could have defended that knight with bishop to c2, uh, but he plays knight to b5, and one of the threats on the board is this idea of rook takes b5, pawn takes rook, and then bishop takes b3. Now, black does have to worry about this b6 pawn uh, racing, but after knight d6, he should be okay. But instead of that, he plays h3 instead, attacking uh, the structure around white's king. And here, g3 was played in response, and now he executes that tactic we just saw. Rook takes b5, cb5, bishop takes b3, but he does so now with a much more weakened white king. But again, he does have to worry about this b-pawn. Bishop to c4. Jeffrey Zhang immediately tries to get rid of that light-squared bishop and put his queen in an aggressive position. Bishop c4, queen takes c4. And right now, these two pawns look very dangerous. Basically, it's these pawns versus white's king's safety at g1. A knight takes d6. Um, queen to g5 was a strong idea. The idea of coming into d2 with a potential mate on g2. Uh, white would have to play queen to c2, and after bishop f8, it looks like black would be able to stop those pawns. Uh, but instead, he takes the pawn on d6 immediately, and the queen goes to d5. It attacks the knight, controls the b7 square, which is a square this pawn would need to pass in order to queen, and there's a, a lot of potential here, and, and black has to play precisely. Nakamura plays bishop to f8, and white basically has one move really to survive here, and that is the move b6, and he's able to keep uh, black occupied with the pawn enough to d counterbalance the extra piece black has. But instead, he plays the move f4, obviously with the hope that white would take on this square, and then bishop to d4 would pin the queen to the king, and uh, that indeed would be uh, very powerful for white, but there was a much better move. And in this position, Nakamura made it. Do you see the tactic? A really powerful idea. Knight to e4. And the idea is he's basically creating a barrier around this king, so white's king is in a lot of danger. Uh, bishop to f8 was played in the game. Uh, bishop to e3 was possible, but then after uh, bishop g7, Black is just a piece up with the threat of taking on f4, b6, ef4, attacking the bishop and threatening queen to a1, leading to mate. So after knight e4, he goes ahead and takes the bishop on f8, but then ef4, 
And in this position, black's threats are just too great. He's threatening queen to a1, which would create a back rank mate because all of these squares are covered. And he's also threatening queen to b6, which would lead to mate as well. A very powerful display from Hikaru Nakamura. He had to fight hard, but eventually his tactical brilliance broke through. Now, even after going over this great game from Hikaru Nakamura, there is still some great chess you're missing out on. To fix that problem, believe it or not, the key game you're going to want to watch is this game right here. So be sure to check that out for some mind-blowing chess.